Thank you for attending this session. Uh, my name is Yoshiki Tabata, and I work at OSS Solution Center of Hitachi. Today, the session title is How Does the Workload Authenticate an API Request? Implementing Transaction Tokens with Keycrock. Uh, proper authentication of API requests in workloads is one of the important themes, and this time I implemented this using Keycrock according to transaction tokens which are currently being discussed in the IETF OS working group. So first of all, please let me introduce myself. My name is Yoshiki Tabata and I'm a senior OSS consultant at Hitachi and I'm a CNCF ambassador and organizer of Cloud Native Community Japan and the founder of Cloud Native Security Japan. And I mainly work as a specialist in API authorization, and I consult for API management infrastructure and authentication and authorization systems in the financial, public, social, and industrial fields. And I'm also a contributor to OSS related to authentication and authorization and API management. For example, I contribute to Keycrock and Identity and Access Management OSS and Swissscale and API management OSS. And as activities, I spoke at events such as API Days, API Specification Conference, or Security Workshop, and so on. And I wrote some books about, uh, and web articles about identity and access management. Through these activities, I'd like to spread authentication and authorization to CNSF more widely. So let's get back to the main topic. These are today's contents. First, I describe the difficulty for workloads to authenticate API requests. Then, I introduce transaction tokens. After that, I describe how to implement transaction tokens with Keycrock. Finally, I give a demonstration. First, I describe the difficulty for workloads to authenticate API requests. As you may know, the de facto standard for API authentication is OS 2.0. RC 6750, the OS 2.0 authorization framework, bearer token usage describes the client request the protected resource from the resource server and authenticates by presenting the access token. And it is the most common way to authenticate API requests. And the way of issu issuing an access token is described in ROC 6749, the OS 2.0 authorization framework. This figure shows the overall picture. First, the authorization server issues access token by following ROC 6749, and then the client performs an API request with the access token by following RFC 6750. Then the resource server checks the access token. To authenticate an API request, the resource server should perform at least the following checks of the OS access token. These are recommended by such as RFC, RFC 6750 and also by the draft CNSF Zero Trust white paper. First, check the signature. If the access token is an assertion-based token like JOT, Verify if the token has not, not been tampered with. Second, check the EXP and NBF claim. And validate the expiration time of the token. Third, check the ISS claim. And confirm the issuer's identity. Fourth, check the AUD claim. And confirm and check if the audience includes the resource server. Finally, check the scope claim, if it exists, and ensure that the resource owner authorizes access to the resource. There is a famous attack called token redirect attack. Token redirect attack is an attack in which a token generated for consumption by one resource server is used to gain access to a different resource server. Among the token checks, the audience check is to deal with token redirect attacks. 
As shown in the previous slide, AUD claim check is to check if the audience includes the resource server. Look at this figure. If the resource server two checks the AUD claim correctly and receives an access token only for resource server one, the resource server two can detect the token is not for the resource server two. However, there is a case where the audience check is difficult. In cloud native architectures, there are many internal workloads and each workload should check whether the audience is the workload itself or not, especially in a zero trust context. The audience is dedicated, audience is decided based on the resource owner's consent, but it's hard for the resource owner to identify all audiences and consent for each consumption. In this session, I will take a deeper look at this case. Next, I introduce transaction tokens. Transaction token is a relatively new specification and discussed in IETF OWASP working group. And it's internet drafted published. Transaction token is a short life signed JOT that asserts the identity of a user or workload and assert an authorization context. The below is a transaction token's body example. There are three notable claims, and the AUD claim, and REQ WL claim, and PURP claim. The AUD claim is the audience claim and specify the workload. The REQ WL claim is the requesting workload claim and specify the internal entity that requested the transaction token. So we can check the intermediate workload in the same transaction. The PURP claim is the purpose claim and specify the purpose or intent of this transaction. Next, how to issue a transaction token. A workload performs an OS 2.0 token exchange defined by RC86932 to obtain a transaction token by invoking a special token service called the transaction token service and provides sufficient con context to generate the transaction token. To describe from the overall picture of the previous slide, first, the authorization server issues an access token by following RFC 6749. And then the client performs an API request with the access token by following RFC 6750. And then the workload one performs the transaction token request. And the transaction token service issues a transaction token by following RFC 8693. Finally, workload one performs an API request with a transaction token. This slide shows benefits of uh, using transaction tokens. Transaction tokens help prevent spurious invocation by ensuring that a workload receiving an invocation can independently verify the user or workload on whose behalf an external call was made and any context relevant to the processing of the call. Even if the audience claim or the external token, external access token includes only workload one, workload one can exchange token for a transaction token, AD include workload two in its audience claim. Then workload two can check the audience to prevent a token redirect attack. And workload two also can implement more fine-grained access control by checking its purpose and the requesting workload. Next, I describe how to implement transaction tokens with Keycrock. First, I briefly introduce Keycrock. Keycrock is identity and access management OSS, and Keycrock provides OS 2.0 authorization server feature and single sign-on feature. Keycrock is a CNCF incubating project. Here, I introduce three major features. First, Keycrock supports standard protocols 
such as OS 2.0, OpenID Connect, SAML, and so on. And here highlighted Geeklock supports OS 2.0 token exchange. It is previous support. Second, Geeklock can log in with social networks, such as GitHub, X, Facebook, and so on. Finally, Keycrock can connect to existing user stores, such as LDAP and Active Directory servers. And next, I'd like to introduce Keycrock's flexibility. Keycrock is designed to cover most use cases without requiring custom code, but is also flexibly customizable. To achieve this, Keycrock has many service provider interfaces called SPI, for which you can introduce your custom features without building Keycrock source code. For example, there is authentication SPI, in which we can introduce custom authenticators to introduce original authentication methods. And also there is a user storage SPI, which we can manage users in an original user store. Also, there is the OS2 token exchange SPI, that is what we focus on today. We can introduce transaction tokens by implementing transaction tokens SPI provider. In Keycrock, there are over 100 SPIs and there are over 400 built-in SPI providers. Next, I will explain how to implement transaction tokens with Keycrock. As the previous slide shows, by implementing an SPI provider and extending the token exchange feature, Keycrock can have transaction token service features. By doing that, one Keycrock can play two roles. One is the OS2 authorization server, and one is a transaction token service. So Keycrock issues OS2 access tokens, also issues transaction tokens. There is one implementer's consideration, that is client authentication. As the same, at the same, as the same OS2, OS2 token exchange, client authentication is necessary to issue a transaction token. In this figure, it is this red area. The way of client authentication is out of the scope of the transaction, sub, transaction token specification but recommended to rely on mechanisms such as Spiffy. So how to implement client authentication by relying on Spiffy? There are two formats for Spiffy verifiable identity document called SBIT, an X509 certificate called X509 SBIT, and a JOT token called JOT SBIT. Regarding X509 bit, client authentication occurs with mutual TLS, utilizing the PKI method of associating certificate to a client, similar to TLS client OS defined by RFC 8750. The transaction token request will be like this. The workload specifies client ID in its body, and it presents the client, certif client certificate in the mutual TLS handshake. Regarding JOT SBIT, client authentication occurs with a JOT bearer token. In the context of OS 2.0 token exchange, using the actor token parameter. The transaction token request will be like this. The workload specifies JOT SBIT to actor token and JOT token type to actor token type in its body. And then Keycrock needs to verify SBITs. How to verify SBITs is another consideration. To verify SBITs, Keycrock needs the latest SBITs which are rotated frequently and automatically. There are two options. Option one is that Keycrock fetches SBITs from the Spiffy workload endpoint every time Keycrock receives a transaction token request. Option two is that triggering the unsubit rotation and updating the credentials Keycrock has. Described in this figure, it looks something like this. 
In option one, key clock pulls subits, and in option two, spiffy implementation like Spire pushes subits asynchronously. To decide which one to adapt, we will need to compare them in terms of ease of implementation and performance. Finally, I give a demonstration. In this demo, uh, I have implemented a simple transaction token so you can see how it works. The demonstration configuration is based on Spiffy Quick Start. This figure is from the Quick Start code OPA authorization with Envoy and Jot Speed. Here we use Jot Speed because its implementation is easier than X509 bit. And currently in the client authentication process, just decode Jot Speed and verify each claim, not yet implemented part of fetching the latest bits. This is a future task. In this quick start, two front end services display a web page. One displays a web page and one displays another web page. The front end service calls APIs of the back end via Envoy to get the information to be displayed on the web page. When calling APIs, Envoy Jot Auth helper injects Jot Subit, which gets from Spire agent. After that, Envoy Jot Auth helper validates the Jot Subit. And this timing, it requests authorization to OPA. If the authorization and validation succeed, the backend will return an API response. To build a transaction token testing environment, I change the quick start like this. First, I introduce Keycrock as an authorization server and a transaction token service. Then change front end to provide APIs, not a web page. Also change Envojot or auth helper to other transaction token request to Keycrock and transaction token injection logic. Finally, change OPA to check the audience purpose and requesting workload of the transaction token. The overall flow in this demo is as follows. First, issue an access token with Keycrock, then perform an API request with the access token to both front-end and front-end two. Then both services request a transaction token with JotSpeed. Then both services perform API requests with the transaction token. Then OPA performs authorization and checks audience is the backend. The purpose is finance.watchlist.add and the requesting workload is front-end, not front-end front -end two. After authorization, the API request to the front-end succeeds, but the API request to front-end two fails. So I will show you the actual demo environment. Uh, these are the all pods and their key clock and front end and front end two and back end. Also their spire agent and spire server. Their front end service and front end the two services and the key clock, and these services are published by this port, 3000 and 3002 and 8080. And 
I use Minikube, so I need to port forward these ports, so I port forward using cube, cube CTL port forward command. So the front end one is 53,000 port, and front end two is 50,000 two port, and key clock is 58,080 port. So, first, I'd like to issue tokens and be a key clock and uh, using the authorization code of grant. This is a key clock configuration. I use test uh, realm and uh, I register the client. Oh, just a moment. Front end for front front end front end and front end two. And this client uh, auth authenticate using actor token. So I implemented custom SPI provider to uh, perform auth. Just a moment. Maybe some program is called. Is there any technical stuff? No. Mm. Mm. This is okay, but <laughs> not not any display. Thank you very much. Yes, transaction, hmm? transaction. Uh, that is uh, uh, defined, defined in the transaction token specification and uh, we can exchange to another, so you mean the replace the transaction token and we can not replace the uh, transaction token and propagate the access token. Mm, 
Yes, uh, if uh, check the audience claim correctly, uh, the, and using the only one access token, the audience claim should contain the nine workload, or maybe the workload is some kind of domain, uh, which is, uh, how to say, uh, Mm, not mm, how to say uh, inter internal domain. Yes, in this in that case, uh, maybe one uh, audience can be shared uh, with uh, several workloads. Thank you very much. Please. Are there other similar technologies that mm -hmm. accomplish this, like houses compared with what else is there? Another uh, similar technology to uh, realize this kind of this. Mm, yeah, uh, there are several technologies. Uh, for example, uh, using the token exchange and uh, called uh, token translation or uh, a token translation is a external access token is a, how to say, uh, not JOT or some kind of lightweight token and not publish the uh, privacy information, then exchange uh, another talk, access token for internal workloads. And that access token is included JOT and uh, using some kind of information uh, for internal workloads. Is that uh, uh, I saw uh, some uh, project uh, uh, adapt that kind of technology. Does that answer your question? I don't think I asked a clear enough question. I can talk about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Suddenly, uh, monitored per hour. Just hit the button by mistake. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, just be mm -hmm. careful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. So, maybe the time is left. Okay, this is two twenty. Okay, so sorry, but I uh, continue the demonstration. Yeah. So. I implement the uh, original client authentication uh, called actor token. And so I'd like to uh, first call authorization endpoint.
It is his authorization request. It specifies the response type it called and the redirect URI. And the scope is front end. Ah, and the client ID. Then display the login screen. After login succeed, there. Authorization code. Then the I make token request to the token endpoint, which specified client ID and client secret. This is a client authentication. And redirect to your I and the grant type because authorization code. And last uh, authorization code. Maybe the authorization code is missing. Oh, what's happening? I try again. I already logged in, so. Authorization call is automatically issued. Yes, <laughs> uh, access token is issued. And uh, so next, I called the front end service with the, uh, this access token. The uh, front end service one is Then call succeed and return some sample JSON. And but hmm. 
Okay. Yes, <laughs> forbidden. And uh, this spire uh, tutorial gives some useful shell script. Called, uh, just a moment. and showed uh, the upper decision result. The second one is the result. This is called for front end two. And upper, yes, other two. Yes, here. The first one is front end then is that two. And this also showed the jot subit in authorization header and transaction token header in the transaction token. If I have time, uh, I'd like to take all this and uh, uh, but maybe the time is up, so thank you very much and uh, that's, that's all.